Hey guys, it's Tim from Tilt Shift, and I'm here to do a quick react video. I just got out of the theater, watched Godzilla Minus One. If you remember from season two of Tilt Shift, we did an, an analysis of Godzilla King of Monsters. That movie was a, a lot of fun in many ways. Godzilla was the good guy fighting against all these other ones. Godzilla Minus One, Godzilla's not the good guy. It goes back to the original back in the 1950s and he is uh, wrecking Tokyo. He is the enemy and in this movie he is terrifying. He's pretty scary. It is rated PG-13 uh, for creature violence and for action. And there's a few things that I want to uh, address, like we do in Tilt Shift, where we analyze things, look at the worldview, look at the ideas being taught in this film. Uh, one thing that comes through very, very clearly is the devastation of war. So this film follows a fighter pilot from uh, Japan's military who believes he's failed in his duties, and he gets back home and everything's wiped out. He's lost nearly everybody. Uh, one of the neighbor people survive. Uh, so you see devastation of war very, very clearly and uh, you feel it throughout the film. So uh, one thing that reminds me of, I know a lot of times we glorify some of our war heroes and I understand people do some tremendously heroic things and it, that's worth praising. But at the same time, remember what where war comes from, that whole, um, you know, ultimately it goes back to the pride of man, that we're sinful, and that goes back to what happened in the garden. And uh, it's, so war movies have always been tough for me to watch because it's a reminder of how devastating sin is and what Adam wrecked. And, and someday we're looking, we're looking forward to a time when there is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears, no more death. Uh, so as believers, that's what we should be longing for rather than uh, glorying in war. Uh, the film doesn't glorify war, it, but it just shows the harsh reality of it and uh, it, it can be devastating. Another thing that the film shows, and this comes through pretty clearly in a few places, talking about how many governments, and talking about the Japanese government in this case, not caring about their the lives of their citizens and uh, really not valuing human life at all. They would make things cheaply. They, they The film says they didn't even give um, their pilots uh, ejection seats. And of course, talking about kamikaze pilots as well, they were expected to die in carrying out their duties. But in so many other things, they were things were just made cheaply. They didn't care about human life. We see that in in many ways in our country now, where human life is not valued, and uh, that's that's very much opposed to a biblical worldview, where he, all human life is sacred from the moment of fertilization, and uh, so we should we should view human life as sacred because of that. But um, the film also shows like th this character suffering from like a survivor's guilt, PTSD. They don't diagnose it as that, they don't call it that, but you can see how much anguish he's going through. And so you really feel his, his struggle, his agony uh, throughout the film. And it's very emotional at many times. There, there's a very human, uh, strong human quality to this, which leads to the last point, And that is that the film actually does value human life. It, it stresses that in several places. Um, they have the, well, one thing he, he meets up with a, a young woman shortly after he gets back home and you, you see the whole neighborhood's been devastated and this woman has taken on a, a, a baby who's not her own. She's caring for the baby because that's what you do. That's what you're supposed to do because this, this is the next generation. He takes them in and take care, takes care of both of them and they kind of become his family and there's that strong element that you feel throughout the film with them but they also are looking for a solution a way to defeat godzilla uh in a way that that values life a way that they don't have to throw away lives needlessly like their government had done in the war and uh there's there's one scene in there toward that final battle where they're talking about how it's going to take a miracle as soon as they see godzilla and the other guys yeah, but we still have to do our part we still got to do this and it's a reminder like in scripture so many times when people had miracles performed when Jesus performed a miracle. It wasn't because somebody was just sitting on their couch waiting for it to happen. A lot of times they would come to him and they would ask for that. They would risk things just to get to him. They would, in a, in a sense, they would step out in faith. And so we still have to play our part. God has called us to uh, to live a godly life. Uh, that's what he, he wants each of us to live godly lives, to glorify him and what we, what we do. And that doesn't happen if we're just sitting around waiting for him to act. We need to get out and do what we're called to do. I know that's not what the film is was saying, but it's a reminder that, uh, that God has called each one of us to perform our roles and to do that for his glory. And so that, that's something that uh, that line in that film reminded me of it. Um, so 
yeah, I guess to summarize, uh, just a few quick takeaway points. There's so much more to the movie than that. Um, it's a powerful film in that you, f you feel pretty emotional in many places. And um, the talk about the, the value of human life. And, um, and if you like Godzilla, you could see lots of Godzilla even early on. You don't have to wait for a very long time. So um, it will have you on the edge of your seat. At Tilt Trip, let me remind you to watch what you watch. Thank you.